Thomas Merton, Thomas Merton, the great writer and Trappist monk, was standing on a street corner in, in downtown Louisville when a transfiguration hit him. The city seemed to glow. There was no way of telling people, he marveled, that they were, they were walking around shining like, a, like the sun. There are no strangers. The gate of heaven is everywhere. Sometimes when we least expect it, God opens the eyes of our soul and we too behold the divine within and around us. It wasn't just Jesus who was transfigured on that mountain. Like Merton, it was the apostles. For just a moment, they saw beyond appearances to what is true, to what is beautiful, to what is really there. And even though in the gospel, the description is spectacular, dazzling white, great clouds. But any transfiguration is less a spectacular Hollywood effect, but it is a unitive effect, a sweet glimpse of heaven that comes when you and I are not looking for it. Have you ever looked at a baby asleep or an older person at peace and realized that for a glimpse, heaven and earth meet and that for a moment, there are no strangers, that sometimes all of us are mysteriously one despite our differences? Or have you read the Bible or in prayer or sometimes read a spiritual book, and when suddenly your eyes, and not your physical eyes, you open wide and you saw an insight you never saw before. And there's a sense of peace and a sense of being connected with all around you. Or whether you go to Yosemite or whether there's the meadow or, west, or whether you are at a lake or an ocean, for a split second, you felt one with all around you, the trees, the birds, and the people. In fact, writers like Jeremy call this unitive experience. And these moments are like the transfiguration moments, a glimpse of heaven that is already here. And despite what the disciples and us like to do, we like to build tent, we like to understand it, we like to put it in a box. In our lifetime, it is a glimpse. But what does the glimpse get us to do? In the gospel, the voice is heard from the crowd, from the clouds. This is my son Jesus, my beloved son. I am well pleased. Listen to him. For me, every genuine experience of God, every genuine encounter with Jesus, leaves me more confident about God's love and God's care for my life, even though things can be difficult. It's not an accident that your whole Holy Family Faith community has chosen to be called, to call the community of the beloved sons and daughters. And it is very challenging because you and I don't think of it this way, do we not? That already before the good and the bad that we can do, we are already God's beloved. And, one, and Jesus' central mission, his central message that he communicates again and again and again, that God is with us, that God loves us very much, that nothing can keep us from God. Any sinners, 
and his Judas-like betrayal, and his selfishness. So any transfiguration, any glimpse of heaven is also a glimpse that we are already loved. And this is the truest part of who we are, beyond appearances. And so, like the disciples, at times our eyes, the eyes of our faith, the eyes of our soul are open so we can look at each other beyond the frailties and the mistakes and the pain we cause for one another. But it's not easy to live this way because to live as a beloved of God and to see one another as beloved of God you know what happens, right? You know what happens already. You can't always advance at your workplace because some of the cheating, some of the pushing people down, some of the way we treat people like things and like objects, we can't do. And sometimes we, we treat our beloved family members and how do they respond? Not always well, no? And then we tend to give up because it's hard. And it is. And like the transfiguration that the disciples saw, glimpse, it is meant to take them on their journey to Jerusalem, on our journey of Lent, the journey to encounter the depths of God's love on the cross. Not just in the cross on Calvary, on the crosses of our life. So when we try to treat people like God's beloved, sometimes they respond well. Oftentimes, we're going to get it. We're going to take advantage of. Forgiving enemies is tough because our so-called enemies won't return that. Loving our children is tough. No offense to all the children. Sometimes children can be so ungrateful. And forgiving for the umpteen time if you get a chance to see the film Silence, it's a very good film, it's a hard film. I won't give it away, but there's a one very annoying character in that film. His name is, you know, Katichiro. And he kept coming to ask for forgiveness. And you can't really tell if he's really remorseful, because he keeps doing the same thing again. And when I saw that film, I was so annoyed, until I want to confess it again. And I have the same confessor. And I confess the same sin. I'm like, oh my God. And six weeks ago, I told you the same thing. And six weeks ago, I tried my best. And here again, Father, I failed again in the same way. Being God's beloved. It sounds so wonderful. It sounds so great. And to embrace it, you and I know how hard this is. Hard when we fail. Hard when the powerful voices in our culture says, prove yourself. How productive are you? How much can you consume? Who do you know? What do you look like? Where do you live? All those things. Prove yourself. Make yourself something powerful. And yet, the way of Jesus, the way of the cross, that any transfiguration points to is the way of Jesus who's humble and a servant, a man who's poor, who doesn't even have a place to lay his head, not a great patriarch with numerous descendants, a man without wife and a children. As we continue to catch glimpses of heaven on earth, of our belovedness, of other people's belovedness, we will be like the disciples. Yes, stay there for a moment. It's good to stay there. But any time you and I would try to build a tent and codify it and put it in a box, these experiences are meant to take us along the journey towards the cross. And yes, it includes suffering, but more importantly, 
it opens the door into the resurrection. That is, not just a glimpse of heaven and earth, not just a glimpse of our belovedness and others, but something more lasting. And that's the mystery of uniting our pain and suffering with Jesus. That's why Jesus tells disciples, don't try to tell this to people, because unless they go through their own cross and suffering, they won't know. And so as, as we journey to Lent, we journey towards this vision of heaven on earth. And on the second Sunday of Lent, the church reminds you and I where we are heading. We are heading to encounter Jesus, God's great love, through and in the cross. And on the way, we are given glimpses of our belovedness, glimpses of unity experiences, glimpses of being connected despite our fears, despite our sins. And yet our past, our path to Lent will involve many moments that is not easy to be the beloved, either because of people's sins or miscommunication or unforgiveness or our own hard-heartedness, our own seeing people as things to be used as people that we can get things from. Every Sunday, when we receive communion or receive a blessing, there is a special moment after communion. I know I do this a lot, but I'm going to invite you to especially after we receive communion or a blessing, Take a few deep breaths and simply ask God for the gift to see yourself the way God sees. And all you have to do is breathe. You don't have to think great thoughts. And let the Lord surprise you and I. Maybe not at this moment at Mass, Maybe later when we look at someone else in our lives who we struggle, who we cannot see a child of God. On our journey of life, on our journey of Lent, it's good to be open to God's surprising moments of connection of belovedness, but not to stay there and to let God lead us into difficult moments of life. In very surprising and mysterious way, these difficult moments of life will deepen our sense of mercy, our sense of belovedness. And those moments of catching God's belovedness are glimpses along the way. So as we journey to Lent, let us be open to surprises, to glimpses along the way. But, not, but let us not stay there and allow ourselves to encounter the Lord deeper and deeper, sometimes through sufferings and disappointments.